Our first lesson comes to us from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased the joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burdens and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their depressors, you have broken as on this day in Midian. For all the books of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled up in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The authority shall grow continually, and they shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness for this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. If you would please stand for our offertory carol number 221.
Let us pray. God who abundantly blesses us, we are honored this night to our gifts to those in our community. Bless those in our community and beyond for whom these funds will go and bless us as we seek to serve you and all we do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Loving God, as we gather this holy night, we celebrate you in our hearts in the birth of the holy child. Fill us, Lord, on this day and this night with compassion for one another. We lift prayers for children bright with wonder as well as those children who without, may go without food this night. We pray for those who have lost loved ones and who face this holy season with only their memories. For servicemen and women who are apart from their families this Christmas. For the sick, for the lonely, for the broken in our midst and for all peoples of the world struggling for life, livelihood, and a sense of purpose and justice. Help us to share peace, to share hope, and to share love to all of your children. And so we only wait just a few more hours, and we seek to be restored, O oh God, by your grace and in your love so that we might truly appreciate and accept the precious gift we are about to receive. God of the unexpected, surprise us with those memories. And we join in our hearts and in our minds this very special night in praying that prayer together that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. I invite you now to stand for the reading of the gospel. Coming, of course, on this night from this beloved passage from the gospel according to Luke, may you hear these words. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them. The glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. You may be seated. So it is 
an exciting night. Christmas Eve. Can you feel the excitement? I um, brought a special guest with me this evening. And it's not that. Okay, my special guest this evening. Are y'all ready? It's baby Jesus. In the manger, right there. I don't know if everyone can see or not, but right here on, on top of the organ uh, is the My Nativity set. Um, and on the bottom of these, when you look at them, it says RQ92. RQ Ruth Quirk, 1992. That was my grandmother. I'm going to put baby Jesus in his place right there. When I was a kid, she had made one when I was probably in elementary school. And, and the people were about that big. They, they were big old people. And, and my dad built a big old barn. And it was like the best part of getting out the nativity set and setting it all up. It was very special. And that set is very special to me. My grandmother was 84 years old when she made those and hand painted those. She thought that uh, everyone, before they went out on their own, she wanted all her grandchildren to have a nativity set. So that was when I was uh, at the University of Tennessee about to graduate undergrad that, uh, that I got that set. So it's very special to me. The nativity set, it is, after all, central to our faith. This night, representing the birthday of Jesus, also represents the incarnation of God. And everyone, Christian or not, knows that nativity scene. We've all seen them. Wood ones, paper ones, perhaps glass ones, marble ones, granite ones, pewter ones, soapstone ones. I even saw one in a magazine, believe it or not, a nativity set from Alaska that was carved out of shellacked moose poop. <laughs> you know I really want one too. So if anybody's ever in Alaska and happens to see it, some of us may have even participated in a live nativity uh, before. Or at least we've seen one, we've driven past one. Over and over again, we attempt to take hold of this amazing and familiar story and make it our own. Manger scenes around the world depict this beautiful scene with shepherds and sheep and Maybe a cow and a donkey and some wise men and some camels, an angel, Mary and Joe, and of course, baby Jesus. Town across town and from church corners to, to front yards, year after year, it's very common to put out your nativity scene. But back a few years ago, it also became quite common for pranks to occur, for someone to take baby Jesus away, to steal baby Jesus. You, you may remember hearing about it, or maybe some of you have gotten a baby Jesus stolen before. Some folks thought it was, or think that it's just funny. Some folks are just being downright mean. Some folks protesting the presence of baby Jesus in the manger before Christmas Eve. There was a community in Wisconsin with small community, three churches in the little town square, and all three baby Jesuses were stolen. But the thief left a note. And on Christmas Eve, they all returned to their rightful places. There has been some interesting responses to these thefts over the years. In downtown Chicago, where there is nearly a life-size nativity scene on Daly Plaza, they decided to chain down baby Jesus 
to the manger. Kind of ironic, isn't it? And then they chained the manger down to the ground so no prankster could steal him. There was a story of a, of a city in Florida that inserted a GPS tracking device in the baby Jesus so that they could track it and recover it easily. Now, I find all these stories rather humorous. Of course, perhaps, uh, you know, I have a weird sense of humor. But I want to say, don't they know? Seriously, don't, don't we know? You can't chain Jesus down. You can't keep Jesus in the manger. Even the cross in the grave could not keep him. And GPS Jesus? I mean, it kind of sounds like a cool idea, doesn't it? I need Jesus. I think I'm going to look and see where he's at. But it's unnecessary. It's really not needed. Because you and I encounter Jesus, encounter the living Christ in all sorts of places, oftentimes in unexpected ways and unexpected places. We see Jesus whenever we recall that God is Emmanuel, God with us. We see Jesus in the face of those who embrace those who are suffering. We see Jesus in the face of, of those who comfort those who are grieving. We see Jesus in the face of those who, who give clothes to the needy and food to the hungry and water to the thirsty. And perhaps we see Jesus in line to receive the food and the clothing. We see Jesus whenever the power of love is greater than the love of power. No GPS is needed or required. Jesus is as near as the next act of generosity, the next moment of loving kindness, the next act of selfless sacrifice and love offered to another. We can't chain Jesus to the ground. We can't keep him in a manger. For in wondrous ways, Jesus, God incarnate, will continue breaking free and, and making a way in the world and into our lives, into our hearts, becoming flesh and blood. My favorite story about one of the stolen baby Jesuses was one that uh, showed up eight months later on the owner's front porch and with it was a packet of photos, adventures that baby Jesus had taken. <laughs> baby Jesus had been strapped to the back of a bicycle and given a ride. He had gone to the beach he had rode a bus, he had been at the art museum, and he was just hanging out in someone's kitchen. You know, I think that you and I are here tonight. We come to tonight because we need to hear the Christmas gospel once more. To be reminded, because we can so easily forget in the busyness of our lives, in the chaos and brokenness of the world, within the wars and the disease and the death, within the wildfires and the hurricanes, the storms of job loss and, and all the other stuff that happens, we can so easily forget that God is with us. Emmanuel. The Word became flesh. The divine became human and is still dwelling among us. I said a couple weeks ago in a Bible study that we've been doing um, about Bethlehem in the midst of Bedlam, which this season can be sometimes, that that first verse of the gospel according to John 
the word became flesh and dwelt among us. I love the Greek word there because if you literally translate it, that dwelt or dwells actually translates as pitches a tent. Isn't that cool? The word became flesh and pitches a tent among us. Maybe Jesus is standing in line with us at the grocery store. Or perhaps at that big game. Even tailgating. Perhaps riding in the car. Giving us a hug. Visiting us at the hospital. Or maybe Jesus is sitting around the dinner table in the kitchen. That is the good news of Christmas. God pitches a tent among us. But when I look at scripture, I always say I like looking for the good news, but I also look for a challenge for us today. And I think, The good news and the challenge are sort of the same in this case. Our Christmas challenge is to keep our ears and our eyes and our hearts open in the days to come. In the year 2020, ready, listening, watching, because I'm guessing Jesus is going to show up again And again, and again, if we have ears to hear and eyes to see. So for anyone out there who might be thinking about stealing my baby Jesus, there's really no need. Jesus is already yours. And you don't have to wait until December 25th. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace. I say Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. I hope you have a wonderful night, a wonderful season, shared, sharing love with friends and family. Remember. God is with you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and before one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your law. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And that proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to be our thanks and grace. It is right and a good thing and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creators of the heavens and earth. You created light out of darkness and brought forth the life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only son, Jesus Christ, to be our savior. And at his birth, the angels sang to you in the highest in peace to your people on earth. And so, with your people on earth, in all the companies of heaven, we praise your name and join your unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heavens and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem and there found no room, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of a stable, Jesus was born so that by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. As your word became flesh, born of woman, On that night long ago, so on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and he gave thanks for it and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat for this is my body given for you. Whenever you eat this, remember me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took a cup and after giving thanks to God for it. He passed it around to all of his disciples and he said, take and drink. This is the cup of salvation. The blood of the new covenant. My very life and love poured out and given for the forgiveness of sins. When you drink this, as often as you drink it, remember me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Holy God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the whole world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. If those serving tonight will please come. And as they come, let me give you a little instructions. Ushers will show you to the proper stations. We will have four stations, two in the front and two in the middle. And they will direct you to those stations. This is not a United Methodist table. This is the Lord's table. And all persons are invited, whether you are a member of this church or not. You're invited to take, if you claim Christ, and to be the body of Christ.
Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, you feed us well. We pray, O oh God, that we don't just take this bread and juice into our bellies, but we take it into our hearts, into our lives, so that we truly are the body of Christ, the hands and feet of Christ to a world that so desperately needs the Christmas message that God is with us all. We give thanks, O God, for this holy meal. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Thanks for celebrating with us tonight at Buncombe Street. May the peace, love, hope, and joy of Christ be with you now and forever. Remember, God is with us. God pitches a tent. Blessings upon you. Amen. Mm -hmm.